the No Fate Channel checking in. On today's episode of Community Cultivation, I'm gonna be giving you six simple solutions on how to improve your Wi-Fi's performance. Your Wi-Fi's performance is probably a lot like mine, sluggish and not nearly as fast as it used to be. And that's to be expected as our demands on our Wi-Fi continue to increase. We're connecting desktops, laptops, cell phones, security cameras, Xboxes, Playstations, Blu-ray players, even refrigerators and thermostats are connected to your Wi-Fi nowadays. Today, I'm gonna to be giving you six simple solutions on how to improve your Wi-Fi's performance. The first, and by far the simplest step, is going to be to connect directly to your wireless router with an ethernet cord. If the device is close enough, you always wanna connect it with an ethernet cord. This will always produce a faster internet connection than connecting through the Wi-Fi. This doesn't just count for laptops and desktops. Your Xboxes, Playstations, and Blu-ray players all have an ethernet connection in the back. And if you're close enough, I highly suggest running an ethernet cord. You're gonna see a drastic improvement on performance. Also, connecting these devices with an ethernet cord will cut down on your wireless interference because those devices will not be seeking out and using the Wi-Fi bands. Step number two is to properly place your wireless router. I know you've probably heard it all that you wanna place your wireless router in the center of your home or apartment. You wanna avoid ceilings and floors and walls and anything else that can create interference like microwaves and baby monitors and cordless phones if you're still using cordless phones. That's all great, but what people don't realize is that same information and step and trick also goes for all of your receivers. What do I mean by a receiver? Anything that is looking for a Wi-Fi signal, your Xbox, your PlayStation, your Blu-ray player, that same step goes for those as well. So if you have an Xbox 360, you want to avoid putting it into a cabinet and creating more distance from your wireless router. In fact, you want to shorten the linear distance between your wireless router and that device whenever possible. On to step number three, and that is to add antennas to not only your wireless router, but also your receivers. And again, that's gonna be a constant theme of this video, is to think about not only your wireless router, but the items that are trying to capture that wireless signal. You can go on amazon.com right now, and there are dozens of booster antennas. Click of a button and a few bucks, you can have them at your door in a few days. You can even get crafty and build them yourself. One of the more popular ones is something like this, and I know you can build it and have do a better job than I did, but it is called a windsurfer, and you slide it over your existing Wi-Fi antenna. I've even seen people get really crafty and build booster antennas for their laptops out of Pringles cans and food strainers. Let's take it one step further. How do you boost the antenna on a Blu-ray player or your Xbox? Believe it or not, you can use cooling racks or any other type of metal rack, place it underneath your device, and it will act as a booster antenna. I know it sounds fugazi, but trust me, it works. We are past the halfway mark, and we are on to step number four, and that is to completely shut off any wireless devices that we are not using. Now, I'm guilty of this, and I'm sure you are too, we leave on the Blu-ray player, the Xbox, or the random computer, and we don't think anything of it. Those devices, even though we're not using them, if they are on, they will slowly be siphoning off precious Wi-Fi bandwidth. And shutting them down and completely off is gonna be the huge difference between other devices getting good performance and great performance. So, if it's not being used and it's seeking out a Wi-Fi signal, make sure you completely shut it off. Along the exact same lines of shutting off all of your unused devices, if your cell phone has unlimited data and you're not purposely video conferencing or trying to stream a movie on Netflix off of your phone, you want to disconnect your phone from the home's Wi-Fi. Again, this is the same reasoning as we previously mentioned. You wanna stop siphoning off that precious bandwidth, especially if you're already paying for unlimited data. 
Step number five is gonna cost you, but it is a good bang for your buck. And that's to call your internet service provider and simply ask if you can go to the next tier of internet speeds. So whoever does your internet now, Comcast, Verizon, Cox, whoever it is, give them a phone call, ask if you can go to the next tier speed. Oftentimes they can do this with just a small nominal charge. They don't have to even come out to your home. I'll give you a prime example. I have Comcast, I, did, I gave them a phone call for $10 more a month, I get nearly double my internet speed. Simple as that. It was all it was was a phone call. Many people overlook this step or unwilling because they think it's gonna cost a lot of money, but you'd be surprised. Oftentimes you can renegotiate your plan. They'll lock you into a two year plan and it won't be much more or it would be the same as you're already paying. You've come this far in the video and before I give you the sixth and final step, make sure you smash that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. All right, I know that was a bit aggressive, but we really appreciate it if you do hit the subscribe button and give this video a like. On to the sixth step. The sixth and final step is the most complicated of all the steps, but do not fear. There's a specific reason I titled this six simple steps, because this is still an easy step and doable for anyone watching this video. I don't want you to be nervous about it. And that is to buy and set up a wireless range extender. A Wi-Fi range extender acts as a bridge and it connects the sections of your home or apartment that get poor Wi-Fi reception to the ones that get good Wi-Fi reception. It's not going to make your Wi-Fi signal stronger, but it is going to fix those problem areas that get just horrible reception and you get bad streaming on Netflix, YouTube, whatever you're watching. They drastically range in price, anywhere from $20 to $200. I went with one of the more top of the line ones, a Nighthawk, that normally is priced for $140. I was able to buy it refurbished, certified by Amazon with a 90 day warranty for only $75. But that one, even though it was top of the line and super complicated, only took me 30 minutes to set up. And of those 30 minutes, the majority of that time was actually finding a good location for that sweet spot between where my Wi-Fi signal was good to poor. So if I can do it in 30 minutes with one of the more top of the line ones, you guys out there can certainly set one up in no time. Which of these six simple solutions helped you out the most? Let me know in the comments below. As usual, thanks for watching and don't save anything for the trip back. The No Fake Channel is dedicated to providing you with ideas on how to improve your community. Your community at home, your community in your neighborhood, and your community in your town. I'll also be giving you insight into this dad's tricks, trips, and tribulations.